Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM, how self-explanatory is that? Uh, we've got 32 songs I want to talk about this week, and it is a full dapper week, which means there's a song from every category and more than 30 tracks. So uh, before we head into it, obviously there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs if you want to access them there. So let's hop into it with the trash category, songs that I think are absolute trash. Um, and just remember, these are just my opinions, so don't take them as gospel truth. We've got Little Texas with Rip City. Uh, Little Texas with a very Little Texas track. Uh, it's in your face, it's fast, it's abrasive, and not for me. I do not get the appeal of this distorted hard style. Uh, there, there are moments where the backing sound like kind of cuts out, and I know it's intentional, it just doesn't sound great. I'm genuinely curious. If you really like Little Texas, tell me why, tell me why I don't get it. Then we've got Alesso and Nate Smith with I Like It. Uh, this is just a mess of a track. Uh, it covers Cardi B's I Like It Like That kind of main hook and then turns the rest of the track into this like slap house pop country fusion. It's just all over the place sonically and did not work for me. Then we're moving into the bad category, songs that I thought were uh, bad. Uh, we've got Slander, Nicodemus, and Pooh Bear with If Tomorrow Never Happens, a classically underwhelming slander cut. Uh, the energy just feels depleted, the vocals don't add much gusto, and the drops are just kind of flat, mellow dub that we've got from Slander here and there. So, I don't know, it's weird. Slander, sometimes they absolutely hit it out of the park with this style, sometimes just absolutely flat. Don't know why, but that one didn't work for me. Then we've got Armin Van Buren and David Guetta featuring All Day with In The Dark. Really, really uninteresting house with poor mixing and a boring melody. That is it on this one. Then we got Sabai Cinemata and Lexi Scatina with Somebody to Love Me from the new North Star LP out now by Sabai. And this is just another derivative mellow dub track from Sabai. And this time it's with some pretty bad mixing on the drops. Uh, probably the worst this week, I would have to say. Uh, stylistically, it's better than Sabai's, I would say, generic future bass sound. But the mixing was really just a huge letdown and really did not make me enjoy this track. Then we got Adventure Club and Bear Grylls featuring Craig Mabit with Play the Game. Something about this track just kind of felt off the whole time. The kind of awkward vocals, the quick intro outro, the kind of generic dubstep. I'm not really sure what it was wanted to be, I guess, in this. Like, this track didn't really know what it wanted to be in any capacity. It just was all over the place and it just didn't work for me. We're moving into the meh category, songs that I thought were meh. We've got Black Tiger Sex Machine and Wasio with You Shall See. I didn't mind the production here as it's very Black Tiger Sex Machine dubstep, which I'm okay with for the most part, but the vocals just did really not sound great here. They were um, almost like bored. It sounded like someone came into the studio for the very first day or first second of recording, went like blah, 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 like this, and then they were like, great, that's good to go. So I just didn't like it. And so that's why it's just here in meh. And we've got Data Life and Dexter King with See What I See, big, full-sounding maiden stage kind of future rave track that is short to the point and meant for the big festivals, nothing more, nothing less. Then we got Camel Fat and Nadia Ali with Endlessly. I'm actually surprised with how underwhelmed I thought this track was. It's pretty generic progressive house with no real X factor of atmosphere or style or real, um, yeah, just a different tone to it, which is uh, very not Camel Fat, I feel like. So uh, yeah, just meh. Then we got Kaizo and Riot with NMF. Uh, with Riot's new style, I feel like them and Ka uh, Kaizo actually really meld together well. Um, that being said, this did feel more like a kind of generic, metallic sounding, heavy, abrasive dubstep cut. Um, but yeah, so I, I think the, the sounds melded together well, but I just think they both have individually better tracks than this collaboration. Then we got We Thin featuring Shy Martin with Place in My Mind from the new Life of a Wallflower Volume 2 out now from We Thin, the new album. Yeah, this is a lighthouse tune with jittery synths, uh, all with a very like real commercial tint to it all. The mixing is pretty lackluster, I would say, which kind of gives it a bit of a commercial tint to it. And the song is uh, fairly generic for We Thin standards. I don't know. I just feel like there's uh, a lot more that could have gone on here for We Thin, and he kind of just was like, whatever on this. Then we've got Oliver's and Ellie with Wish, a lighter dance uh, floor drum and bass track with a groovy melody and nice vocals. Um, I do think in the universe of Oliver's tracks, I think this is um, not one of the better ones. I don't think it's bad. I just think there's other more uh, like exquisite tracks out there in the Oliver's. Oliver's, yeah, Oliver's universe. And then moving into the good category, we've got Blank and Haleen with Silence. Uh, generally solid mellow dub from these two, but is enhanced a lot by Haleen's vocals. Um, I think if there were any or most other vocalists here, I think the song would have landed in meh, but I just a sucker for Haleen's vocals. And so I thought this track was pretty solid. 
Then we got SG Lewis and Ludes with Paradise. This is a simple house tune, uh, but kind of fairly underwhelming for SG Lewis standards. It's got that kind of classic French house guitar melody, but other than that, the track doesn't really do a whole ton. The vocals are an earworm for sure, though, and I think uh, are another big plus for this track that adds it from, makes it from meh to good, so. We've got Ramesses B and Eerie with Offline. Ramesses B is still on that funk grind and it's clearly working for him. In the grand scheme of things, I think his style of funk is better than like 95% of other stuff out there. Um, and this is just another example of that. There's a certain like kind of flair and added element to his funk production that kind of keeps the genre feeling fresh time and time again. So... Then we've got John Summit and Paige Cavell with Tears from the new debut LP from John Summit, Comfort in Chaos. A more laid back, progressive kind of techno hybrid that's uh, been working well for John Summit right now as he kind of straddles these two distinct styles of his, the kind of more older school techno of his and the more modern progressive house. I say modern, it's been like, it's been just a couple of years, if that. But um, yeah, Paige's vocals are great here as well. And I think the track is uh, pretty solid. Then we've got Sultan with Serpent King, a dubstep trap fusion of sound design and tone that is just super strong. Um, it sounds like a collab track between, like, it's a Sultan X Sultan track where it kind of balances the dubstep Sultan and the trap Sultan and then kind of puts them together for one track that uh, kind of just dominates. And uh, I was a fan. Then we got Mr. Fiji Ouija with Geist, another consistent, moody trip-hop track from the Fiji man himself. Um, nothing too out there, but yet again, yeah, this is just consistently great quality garage, and I am a fan of that particularly. And we got Alexander Panos with Aperture for Meadow. Uh, you likely don't know Alexander at this point as he's a pretty new up and coming artist, but uh, if you liked Porter Robinson's Nurture album and the whole vibe and atmosphere of that, you will love this song. This is very reminiscent of that to like a T. Um, you can, the, the inspiration from that album is very, very evident on this track. Uh, it's a mixture of, from that Nurture album, of like lifelike and dull scythe, this kind of very ethereal atmosphere, delicate piano licks and bubbly synth melodies, um, but with this kind of like weird, jittery, kind of off kilter like production the entire time um, it's very much an irregular track in structure with no real drop but it is a beautiful track that again if you liked porter's uh, nurture record you will love this track then we got john hopkins featuring valena with ritual palace uh, a beautiful and serene soundscape of ambient production it's not flashy in the slightest but the simple progression and tonal movements were really quite nice uh, one that i just thought hit really well despite it being pretty simple so which it can be sometimes all the time then we got Matt Zoe with It Might Be a Sign uh, from the new Sign of the Times EP out now. Uh, Matt Zoe's uh, Nero Funk is pretty consistent in its uh, tone and quality. It's a relatively simplistic cut for how long it is at almost six minutes, um, but it has a bit of a like kind of sci-fi aesthetic to it, which is a really nice touch too. And so uh, I, was, uh, I was a fan of this new Matt Zoe track. Then we've got Elohim with Ticking Time Bomb from the new Power of Panic LP from Elohim. Uh, yeah, just a really unique track genre-wise, a kind of taste of mid-tempo, some trap hi-hats, and some, like, overall just a very ambient overtone to the whole track. I'm really loving this new Elohim style, and uh, I'm certainly a sucker for her production, and I think this is a really solid one from the record. Then we've got Maisel with Take Me Away. Uh, yeah, Maisel taking on a purely hybrid trap sound for the first time in a while that I can recall, because um, it typically leans a lot more into that kind of future-based genre of things. But um, yeah, this is really solid. It's bright and light and has that stuttering melody that matches kind of perfectly with the more standard trap elements uh, that the song has. So big ups for that song. Then we've got Test Pilot with Wet, and Test Pilot is the alias of Joel Zimmerman, so this is Dead Mouse. Um, but yeah, this is a long, progressive techno track with a dense atmosphere and intricate sound design. It's very classic Joel Zimmerman kind of track with long movements and the slow build of each new element of the track, where you can really tell when a new style and sound and tonal elements being added all throughout. So I thought it was great. Then we got Pauline Her and Marley with Fault Line, a song with two really unique sections. Uh, the first is this kind of more playful, future-based kind of almost like liquid trap style with a kind of back end being a more standard four on the floor trance beat. Um, I think Pauline Her has been on fire lately, and this is just another killer track. This is um, there's a bunch this week that just have uh, real separate movements from the first to the second, and this is just another great example of that. Then we got Have with Pressure. Uh, Have showing a more kit-heavy side to his drum and bass production with snappy, muted percussion instrumentation. It hits hard, but in a different way than typical Have does. It's much more of like individual punchy elements than one big kind of wide sound, and it worked really, really well here. 
Then we got Solomon France and Halier with a Crisis from the new double-sided single from Solomon France on Monster Cat. And yeah, this is just some really nice polished liquid drum and bass that sounds a lot like Fox Stevenson's production does. Um, albeit the vocals are quite different, but um, yeah, it's got a bit of a kind of rock edge to it as well, and just all around works great. Um, it's got energy, the mixing is fantastic, the vocals are solid, and in a week with a lot of drum and bass, this kind of stands out by, I would say, a wide margin. Then we've got Salute and Disclosure with Lift Off from the new True Magic LP from Salute. And uh, yeah, this is just a simple speed garage in the grand scheme of things, but um, as it's so graceful and smooth, it just hits hard. Again, it's relatively simple, but um, Disclosure's influence on here also is really quite evident, and the track as a whole is just pieced together so well, and is another great example of how sometimes something more simplistic can work uh, in its favor more so than not. So. Then we got AT Aliens and Dion Timmer with I Am Why I Miss You. Uh, yeah, this is a brilliant collaboration with a ton of tonal variety. Um, dubstep first drop, trap midsection, and then a side trance finale. And somehow all three of these styles feel really cohesive and pieced together in the grand scheme of this one three minute track. Um, this was pretty magical. But then we're moving into standout three tracks I've got that I think are cut above the rest and I think are standout tracks. And we're starting with Beast Boy's Damage. Uh, one of the best Beast Boy tunes to date, I think, hands down. The digitized synth melodies are tight. The percussion work is clean. The vocals aren't really a forefront of the track, but support in a really, really great way. And I'm just loving this new one. Then we've got Velvet Pony from uh, with Girls Who Are Wizards from the LP of the same name. Uh, what a throwback to early kind of 2010s Complextro dubstep um, that just yeah, kind of has it all, um, including a vocally driven bridge and outro sections. Um, the song sounds serene when it wants to, but also hits hard when it needs to. Um, it's also peaceful all throughout and then chaotic when it also needs to. It's just killer. It had a, has it all. It's almost six minutes. It is just a fantastic standout track. Go listen to it and the whole record. And finally, my number one song of the week is Dirt Monkey and Cyclops with Flat Earth. I am absolutely bananas for this track. It is wonky, weird, all over the place, and sounds incredible. I haven't heard much of Dirt Monkey up to this point, but this is without a doubt my favorite Cyclops track, uh, maybe ever. Um, it's a nasty quick hit of wobbling and wonky dubstep that absolutely blew me away in a way that I did not expect at all. So... Uh, but yeah, that has been This Week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Botan Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.